right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Decred in Depth. I'm your host, Angelo, and on today's show, I have Miss Lindsay McConaughey, head of PR for DCR. What's going on, Lindsay? Hi, Angelo. Thank you for having me on the podcast. It's great to be here. Of course, of course. So let's talk about your background and how did you get into crypto? So in terms of my background, I've always been in PR. I started out agency side. I worked with a range of clients, um, including companies like Bird's Eye, Diageo, um, like businesses in the sports space, like Puma, um, fashion brands, television shows. So it was quite a range. Uh, then I went in-house to manage PR, um, first for a company called Top Cashback that was in the e-commerce space. And a lot of the focus there was on personal finance, as it was all about saving money. Um, and then after that, I went to work for a health tech startup. And um, I would say that was probably um, a turning point for me because it was the first time that I'd worked with a startup that had, you know, this big mission, that, you know, they really wanted to change the world and make an impact. Um, so that was that was a really great experience. Um, and that was all in London. Um, and then from there, I moved to California and started working for myself. Um, and decided I wanted to stay, um, you know, kind of in that in that sector, or you know, work with similar companies who were doing innovative things or startups you know, that had like big missions. Um, and so, in terms of my introduction into the crypto space, um, the first time I heard about cryptocurrencies was through Stephen Wagner, aka Radar. Um, he and my husband have have known each other for a while, and he first told us about Bitcoin. And I remember that conversation so clearly with my husband when he was explaining Bitcoin to me. And I just had so many questions and it was just so different from anything I'd come across before. So yeah, I just remember being really fascinated and, and that was the first time I'd heard about cryptocurrencies. Um, and then on a professional level was um, later when we'd moved to California and we were again speaking with Stephen and he Build us in on Decred. With everything that's going on in the world, how do you feel the the macro environment is affecting the PR space within crypto? I would say like macro events always, always affect, you know, PR efforts. Um, you know, we, we draw up an outreach plan. We have our story ideas um, and our calendar, but you always have to be ready at a minute's notice to adapt to what's happening, you know, whether it's in the crypto space with competitors or even in, in mainstream news. So obviously in the last six months, you know, COVID has been a big part of that. It's been all consuming, top, constant topic in the media, you know, as a global pandemic would be. Um, so, you know, while on the, on the one hand, you know, completely changed what, you know, I guess some of the story ideas we were planning, um, it's, it's actually led to some really interesting conversations around, you know, about crypto and, you know, our monetary system. Um, you know, fixed supplies versus unprecedented money printing. Um, you know, one of the things that we saw was that, you know, unfortunately, a lot of businesses, um, you know, they didn't have more than a month or so of operating costs saved. So when they were struggling or when business dried up, you know, they had to close or they were laying off staff. Um, so this actually became a good opportunity um, to talk with journalists about the way that Decred operates and our, you know, how um, you know, our, I guess, you know, business model, quote unquote. Um, you know, we we didn't have to let go of any contractors. We had we still had a robust treasury, which was still growing due to our block reward system. So this was, you know, in in stark contrast, what we were seeing. So we were talking about you know how crypto projects can actually be quite resilient, um, you know, and more responsible than you know some um, traditional businesses. You know, particularly, there were lots of stories about big airlines who had spent most of their, you know, money on stock buybacks. Um, you know, it was all tied up there, and you know they were struggling and needing bailouts. Um, so that was just one example of, you know, how we reacted to, um, you know, a mainstream um, media topic and just the kind of conversations that it enabled us to have to highlight, you know, the the benefits and positives about Decred. Now you kind of already touched on how you heard about Decred through Rada and the Rada Group. 
uh, when did you first become a contractor and what was that process like? Yeah, so um, I, like, we obviously we'd moved to California and um, Radar was telling us um, about Decred at this point because he was involved in the project and, you know, I was looking to work with, you know, innovative businesses, um, you know, lots of those tend to be in the tech space. So I was just really interested in, you know, hearing more and really um, diving a bit deeper into just cryptocurrency and, you know, how, how it all worked. Um, so that's when I really got involved. It was January 2018. And um, I stuck around till about November um, when Ditto's proposal was passed. Um, and then I came back in in January 2020 with a formal proposal, um, which was um, which was passed. Um, obviously, very pleased with that, and I'm continuing PR efforts as we we speak after a second successful proposal. And um, so that's sort of my my background as a, a contractor. How would you how would you define the role that PR plays within the the world of crypto assets and and why do you feel that it's important? I'd say the role of PR from a broader perspective, you know, it's ultimately to communicate with your target audience. You want to build relationships, establish trust, and ultimately inspire action. Um, but more specifically, I would say, you know, it's two things. It's to it's to make sure we're being included, included in relevant narratives. So for us, that's topics on you know, governance, security, privacy. Um, it gives us a presence in those areas. And we, and the opportunity to establish ourselves as experts, you know, which is important for building trust. And the second part is to help shape that narrative. So you can you can tell a story in many different ways. Um, so what we do through PR is ensure that we're including all the right messages in our communications, so that these are coming through in any new stories about us. Um, and it also helps ensure that we're staying top of mind with our audience as well. Um, you know, they say that you need multiple touch points with your audience to get them to ultimately you know, make a purchase or an investment. So PR plays a, a big role in that. You know, it forms part of those touch points and builds that familiarity with a project and helps build that trust, which will ultimately result into that buy in of the project. Understood. Uh, Lindsay, what are some of the metrics that you use to measure the effectiveness of your of your work with the project? The immediate results of the work that I do are in the news articles that we're featured in. So we can look at how many articles have been secured, you know, either in a month or over a period of time and, you know, the type of news articles that they are. So how prominent are our comments? What's our share of voice in the article? What kinds of publications have we been featured in? The community definitely has wanted to see Decred in more mainstream publications. So that's been a major focus. Um, so it's a particularly big win when we're featured in publications outside the crypto space. Um, you know, as so we're reaching that wider audience and you know new audience. Um, so that's, I would say, the the main way that um you know it's measured currently. Like I share a, a list of publications we've been featured in every month, and I have a complete list of articles that have been secured as well. Um, an ideal scenario would be to find you know correlation between news coverage and you know price or volume um, but that can be tricky to to prove and, and PR doesn't always have immediate effects like that you know it certainly can but it can often be a long game and there's also a lot of progress that can be measured and made behind the scenes that can be really valuable long term so building relationships with journalists regular contact with them sharing our expertise and news stories um the community sometimes asks you know what's the value of being quoted in an article that's about bitcoin or or a topic that's not really related to decred which decred which i think is a good question um you know and the answer is there can be several benefits so you know one is that we're being positioned as an authoritative voice in the crypto space which as we've mentioned is important for establishing trust and familiarity um, but it's also a great way to build relationships with journalists you know these kind of stories it's, it's gotten our spokespeople on the phone with key journalists and you know they've often had a much wider conversation you know than what you see in the article you know they've talked about the topic but they've also talked about decred um you know provided a background and so 
that's you know educating um, the journalists. You know, they have a deeper understanding of of the project, and that can really be useful long term when we come to pitching them company news and we're looking for those those stories more about decred. Um, you know, they'll slightly they'll be more receptive to us and also come back to us for comments and future pieces. Um, so that's another way that we know that we're making progress that perhaps isn't as as seen. Um, and also another thing to keep in mind is, you know, if we're not being posted in these articles, um, you know, they'll often go to another project for a, a spokesperson. So it's obviously preferable that we're getting that exposure, you know, as opposed to, to other projects as well. Uh, what have been some of the challenges that you faced within the community? <laughs> yeah, so I think in, in the beginning, it was perhaps a little bit, you know, daunting just showing up and interacting with so many people all at once. Um, and certainly the proposal process, um, you know, while it, it's incredible and it's instrumental to our decentralization, it's certainly nerve wracking putting yourself out there, um, you know, being open to potential like criticisms and publicly answering comments. Um, but in both cases, it was, you know, interacting with the community on a day to day basis and going through the proposal process. Um, both experiences have been so positive and I'm always so impressed about how well the community functions. Um, and I find it really interesting because it's, it's the total opposite of what traditional companies do. You know, they believe you need to be physically sitting with your team every day. Um, you know, they tend to do a lot of things to ensure their teams are bonding and working well together, like team building days or regular social events. You know, and with Decred, a lot of us have, have never even met before. Um, but despite that, um, I think we function so effectively. Um, I'm always working with really short deadlines as journalists often often use things ASAP. And our spokespeople are so quick to turn around comments. You know, they're responsive, they're helpful. They're willing to take the time to share their thoughts, um, you know, whenever it is, whatever time of day. If I need help with a story idea or understanding topics, that are of a more technical nature. You know, people are always willing to take the time to help and give feedback, um, you know, and and that can always be the case with traditional organizations. You know, sometimes the approval process can take a long time. There's lots of red tape. Um, and as a result, opportunities get missed. So I'm always, I'm always so impressed with the community and just, you know, despite being located all over the world and all these different time zones and, you, you know, we don't have sort of, official office hours even, you know, I, I'm never concerned about not getting a response or the information that I need in order to do my job. Um, and beyond that, I think what also really comes through is just the dedication and the commitment and the passion that um, people have for the project, which again, you think would be difficult to ascertain through through text where sentiment can often be lost, um, but it's, it's really not. And it makes for such a pleasant experience. Um, and just the other thing I'd probably note is just how respectful everyone was during the proposal process. I didn't find anyone to be hostile or rude. Everything was done in a really cordial, respectful way, which was which was very much appreciated. Um, you know, and also just I think is a great reflection on, on the community. Here's a question a lot of people ask, and uh, you you may have the answer. Why do you feel the the crypto asset space? Uh, places so much emphasis on on marketing it's obviously correlated to price but yeah so I think going back to that um, y you know that, that research that shows you know people need those multiple touch points um, you know in order to make that purchasing decision so you know companies place a big emphasis on marketing for that reason there's a lot of noise out there you know you want to be top of mind um, but I would say, particularly for the crypto space, you know, there's the additional challenge, you know, of it being quite technical. You know, we're not talking about just a new flavor of yogurt or something. You know, it's it's quite um, it can be challenging for people to understand, you know, how how cryptocurrencies work, um, and then also how how projects are different from one another as well, like going beyond that. Um, so there's that sort of added emphasis on why communication is so important um, in, in the crypto space specifically. Um, and, you know, as we've also mentioned, you know, a big part of, of marketing and PR is about building relationships and trust. 
and the crypto space has you know has had you know several instances of um you know scams or news stories about you know criminals using crypto so i think there needs to there needs to be an effort to to balance that you know with with stories and messages that are positive um you know that are reassuring that cryptocurrencies are safe and and secure so what people are hearing on on just these i think there was one one today just talking about um you know an effort uh, to you know um combat scams in the space so i think you know there is that need to to balance that to ensure people are hearing positive things so Lindsay, when responding to media and public inquiries about dcr what questions do you find the most difficult to answer yeah that's a that's a good question i feel like i haven't come across too many difficult questions which is which is a good thing um i feel like we're always able to answer journalists questions really well um we're really open and honest about everything um and i'm normally pitching the story ideas or checking in with journalists to see how we can help with content so when they do have questions you know they're normally directed to our spokespeople um and they always do such a fantastic job at answering questions like any questions that come our way um so that's that's always you know, really fantastic, um, you know, that we have really knowledgeable spokespeople who are brilliant at communicating. Um, and we've also been part of such a range of conversations over the last six months. You know, there have been stories about the pandemic, um, how central bank digital currencies are develop, developing, the Bitcoin halving. Um, you know, there haven't really been any sort of recurring questions we've been stumped on yet. So, yes, I would say we, we tend to do quite well. Uh, we've done really well <laughs> so far with, um, with the questions posed to us. Understood. So moving forward, we're, what are some of the steps you feel DCR can take to gain more awareness and attention within the space? Yeah, so I think um, you know, the biggest challenges in securing news stories that are focused primarily about the project can be challenging when we don't have news annou- announcements. It's not impossible, but it's just just more difficult because journalists are always looking for a news hook or you know a, an update or something so to sort of randomly profile a project um you know it's, it's not their job to necessarily advertise um you know um a project you know it's to report the news so um so i think that's you know that's obviously what the community wants is what what we all want you know is these amazing people um pieces about the project but um you know, when we don't have announcements, they're just more challenging. Um, so that's why we're coming up with story ideas, um, you know, like inserting ourselves or being part of these mainstream conversations like Bitcoin halving, you know, what's going on with, with COVID. So it's linked to current news stories, but we're showcasing Decred in some way. Um, so an example would be like the Bitcoin halving. Um you know, that was obviously a huge news story and it was crossing over into the mainstream media. So we came up with this um, with this story that asked, you know, if there was a better approach than Bitcoin's drastic 50% halving. And we outlined three alternative ways um, that cryptocurrencies do this, obviously gradually, um, such as Decred, where we, we gradually reduce the supply by 1% every few weeks. Um, you know, another way is a sporadic approach like Ethereum um, and then a perpetual pr- approach like Monero, Monero that has um, its tail emission approach once the scheduled supply runs out. So the idea is to, you know, to join the conversation. Yes, we're talking about Bitcoin halving, but it's taking a different angle that showcases, you know, other ways that projects handle you know, their supplies. Um, obviously, wanting to put the emphasis on how you know, on Decred and that, you know, we think it's a better way. And so that's, um, that was a story that we, we crafted and pitched. And the story idea itself didn't get pick, picked up, but it gave us the opportunity to demonstrate our ex- expertise. Um, and we did secure a few interviews as a result of this, um, most notably with the mainstream Newswire Reuters. Jake ended up having a really great conversation with them. They, yes, they spoke about Bitcoin and the halving, but they also, you know, Jake also gave an overview of Decred and talked about us as well. So they now have a better understanding of the project, which was fantastic. 
um, and that got published and it was syndicated to I think over 70 different publications you know including the New York Times Business Insider um, and publications all over the world and so that was that was obviously a great win um, and also because the the actual news story itself uh, they we were the only crypto project that was quoted in that article they had the other quotes were from I think two people from an investment firm and then a data platform and and then us so it was just great to be featured in you know one of the biggest crypto stories you know at the time in you know one of the main mainstream news wires and you know being that authoritative you know expert voice you know representing the crypto space um so yeah i think that was a a significant win for us great from a reputational standpoint and also exposure because um you know it was featured in a bunch of publications and including the new york times they have 46 million people so you know good exposure to to a new audience outside the crypto space um so yeah that's just one example of just joining the conversations being creative um you know it's trying to get that media exposure when we don't have news understood so being involved for the project for the for a while do you have any long-term concerns for the project i i mean i feel pretty good um about decred long term and i think the reason why is um you know first of all just the quality of the community um and the development work that we're doing and how we stay true to our core values i think that underpins everything um but i think more importantly is the fact that we're adaptable, you know, thanks to our governance system. So although the future is unknown and there will surely be challenges we'll have to face, um, I feel confident that we can face those and adapt as we need be, as we need to, to, to navigate the future. So it kind of gives me comfort in the unknown, I would say. Right. And what are you most optimistic about? I would say the community for sure. Um, I think, you know, organizations are the sum of their people um, at the end of the day. So, you know, as I've mentioned, I'm always so impressed by the dedication of the team and how hardworking everyone is. Um, you know, not just about the project, but the values we stand for. Um, I think that would be huge in driving us forward and enabling us to achieve great things. Uh, and then just the, you know, the solid development work that's happening and, um, you know, what's being achieved there. It's just significant you know, developments that are solving real problems in the crypto space. So that's really exciting. Well, Lindsay, I, I appreciate you coming on the show. Do you have any closing thoughts and message to newcomers and potential stakeholders? Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Um, it's been great talking with you. Uh, to close, um, I would just say again, it's just such an honor working with this community. Uh, thank you for being so welcoming to me, um, being always being so cooperative and helpful to my requests for info and comments um, and for newcomers and potential stakeholders. Um, I hope this interview has given you some insights into the team and community and just how well it functions and the level of commitment and just that it's a solid project that's staying true to its value, values and missions um, and just, yeah, really achieving remarkable things in the crypto space. Um, so I'm excited to be sharing some of our big milestones for the project this year in the coming months and just to continue raising awareness about Decred. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you.